Hello, I'm Robert Agar Hutton. This is Sam Foster. Uh, today we're going to be doing a collection of things somewhat at random because I'm doing, uh, a th well, two one and a half hour seminars this coming weekend and I just want to play around with some ideas and see what comes out. So it's, it, it's unscripted. There will be some Tai chi -y, Tai Chi stuff. There will probably be some self defense Tai chi -y stuff. And there'll be stuff. Um, I'm 69. And when I turn sideways, you'll see I'm fat. Sam is not 69. He's lean, mean, fighting machine. Uh, so, obviously, let's start with the self-defense side of things. If I'm walking down the street... And without any warning, Sam comes up to me and starts just going bish, bash, bosh. I'm probably going to get bish, bash, boshed. So as with all things where self-defense is the issue, you have to be realistic. You have to understand that no physical skills are a guarantee in the same way. If I go bam to Sam while he's not expecting it, he's probably going to uh, lie on the floor and groan and moan while I steal his wallet. So self-defense, there is kind of a, a, a hidden rule, which is you have noticed something, or you are lucky that you are strong enough and fit enough, so when that first punch comes in, even if it hurts, it doesn't take you out completely. That, however, for anybody that ever wants to watch MMA or boxing, even with really fit people, is a complete unknown. Two boxers, two MMA, MMA fighters in the ring, both prepared, both ready. First one comes out and just happens to get the right shot at the right angle, and the guys spark out. So never, never, never assume that because you've done a bit of training here or a bit of training there, or in my case, quite a lot of training, <laughs> It's, yeah, quite a lot. It's any kind of guarantee. So, let's start with some nice, basic, sort of Tai Chi stuff. Um, Sam, what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands on, on my arm, mm -hmm. gently, so they're just sort of resting okay. there. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is, to begin with, I want you just to push straight back. Right Now what I'm doing is I'm bracing against Sam, I'm allowing his force to come through my shoulder down into my back leg. Thanks Sam. Now I didn't do that really well. I can tell I didn't do it really well because my shoulder hurts. If I'd done it really, really well, all of Sam's energy would have gone through my body down to the ground. Ah. Uh, you can think about it as advanced biomechanics if you like, or biomechanics if you like. So if we do that again, now the more I fight Sam, the more it becomes uh, about who's the strongest. If I can relax, the more I relax, if you can push a bit harder, then it's about, and I failed there, I had to take Sam off the line. Try it again, Sam. Right, so now here, I'm not relaxing enough. There's too much tension in my shoulder. I'm going to try and relax down. I'm going to try and... Ah, that's a bit better. Not easy, but a bit better. So, one of the principles in Tai Chi is to relax. The more you can relax, the more your body can take an incoming force down to the ground. I make no claims to be good at this, because I'm not. Yeah, there are people way, way better than me. Um, unfortunately, and it does need to be said, there's also people that look like they're way, way better than me. They're not because they're using trickery and they're using strength. It just, they just don't look like they're using strength. Uh, you occasionally get quite big people and they'll have people pushing and it kind of looks really relaxed and good, but they're big. You know, when you see little old people doing it, sometimes you see people who've got the real deal. Okay, so we might do some of that, we might not. I might edit that out, I might not. Who knows? Ah, uh, let's see. Wrist grab. So there is a 
wrist lock called Nikaju or Nikio. Um, Sam doesn't like this one. No. Now, what this does is it puts a lot of pressure on the wrist, and the way you relieve that pressure, as you saw, is by going down to the ground because that's where the body wants to go. Unless the person doing it starts to play silly buggers like that, right? <laughs> and, and altering the angle of attack. Now, you'll see that lock in Jiu Jitsu, some styles of karate, all over the place. If I want to do it purely in, say, a Jiu Jitsu fashion, I rest my hand here, I come round here, I push down. If I wanted to do it in an Aikido fashion, I would probably point where I'm going. At that point in time, oh point, little, <laughs> little unintended play on words there, I'm not using my body other than to give me a frame through which to do that. If I want to do it in a more Tai Chi fashion, if I come here, and I'm going to make this very simple so it's very easy for the camera to see. If I bow, because you're a nice person, and I bow, yeah? <laughs> now my, my hands are doing nothing, but my body is forcing you down. If you then combine body movement and arm movement, <laughs> The amount of force in the wrist it's and the forearm. Horrible, isn't it? Yeah, with very little oh, yeah. effort. Um, true story. Years and years ago, uh, at a karate set, well, at a, a mixed martial arts seminar in the sense that there were people from different martial arts, there was a guy there I was partnered up with. The instructor was teaching this lock. I'd done this lock before. Unbeknownst to me, the fairly young, I, I was younger, but he was even younger, younger, a uh, fairly young karate black belt, early 20s maybe, he'd never done it. And we were doing this lock, and the first time I went like that, there was a snap. Oh. And he collapsed on the <laughs> ground, and I thought, oh my God, I've broken him. Luckily, the snap was just the same as when you do that. It was just the, you know, the... the the, the wrist popping. The reason he collapsed on the ground was, he, I mean, it's not, it's not nice, it is painful. He'd never felt that kind of pain before because some styles of karate don't move, please. You know, that's as close as you get kind of thing. And that's the kind of karate he'd done, so. Yeah, I mean, any more force than yeah, you would know yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, I did once train with a guy whose variation on this was to come up to here, and he was a big guy. Come up to here, take your hand out of the way. And then to do this, boom! And if you can imagine <laughs> having your wrist so it's locked there, and then having somebody whoosh, that would wow. be extremely unpleasant. <laughs> I mean, whether you get to like go home with an arm attached across your shoulder, I don't know. I don't know. I think the first one hurts more. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I've said this comes in jujitsu. I've seen it in aikido. There is what I call a kung fu, uh, kung fu. I have seen it in kung fu. There is a, what I call a tai chi variant. See how this one feels, Sam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that all I'm doing is I'm spiraling my fingers, and if I want to do it right, I also turn the waist a little bit. Now the advantage with that is that it tends to take the person off the line a little, and that may be to your advantage. Alternatively. If big ugly person had a friend behind him, you'd keep him there. Alternatively, you'd sort of keep him here. So you can sort of, <laughs> now I'm ready for the next one. Everything, by the way, in martial arts is elegant. Everything in martial arts is uh, throw a punch. I do the block, it all works lovely. Everything in self-defense is haphazard, random, liable for failure. Uh, so the things you do when you're thinking from a self-defense point of view, uh, let's give you a really good example of this. I go to do this lock. Now there's a way to stop this lock. What I want you to do is drop your elbow down slightly, not put that back there, and relax. Just kind of keep your mind there and relax. And relax and relax and relax. And can you feel I'm putting a lot of pressure on? I'm not going down. Mate. But you're not going down, are you? So, <laughs> 
Now, I'm telling him how to do that, and obviously, if somebody was to come and grab me on the street, I'd go, I'm going to put a wrist lock on, but what I want you to do, you wouldn't actually tell them. But some people might be too strong, or they might naturally relax, so if you relax, yeah. relax, relax, relax. So I'm really cranking it up, right? And it doesn't work. What do you do when whatever it is that you're doing doesn't work? Well, with this technique here, what's lovely about it is this hand is merely gently pinning the fingers. So as long as you are alert to possibilities, relax. The minute that doesn't work, you do. Oh, I've trodden his foot. I don't really want to break his ankle at such an early stage in the video. It'll make the rest of the video difficult. So here, what did I do? What I'm doing, plan A has failed. Plan B. Now, I quite like... Uh, sorry, let's just turn you around to there. I quite like this position. Now, there is a possibility if he was kind of really clever, he could maybe bite me, but mm, I'm trying to have a bite. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably not going to hit him. The point is I'm covering his eyes, which he doesn't like. I've also got his nose. Now, the nose is like a bit of a steering wheel for the face, right? <laughs> <coughs> Oh. If you've got that <laughs> nose, you can manipulate the whole face, and obviously the face is, for most people, attached to the head. The head is a heavy part of the body. The minute you start to move the head, the body tends to come with you. I've got his nose again here. Um, if they've got a runny nose, it's not as nice, right? You can sort of come around to here. Then you can fight one of his friends. It feels like you're going to stun me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, let's see. So, plan B, I'm here, doesn't work, bam! Plan B, doesn't work, whoa, run away. Plan B, doesn't work, stay on this side, because although the lock isn't working, in order to keep this relaxed, so keep that relaxed, now, try and keep it relaxed. Now, try and move it. Bit difficult, because mm -hmm. it's difficult to move. I'm not saying it's impossible, but whilst you're keeping that relaxed on, so as the lock won't work... You also you want can't. to move this way, when your arm needs right. to go that way. Right. So, here, as long as I stay here... Now, Sam, could you please punch me with your other hand? Ah. The problem is... <laughs> The problem is, dear old one-armed Sam here, uh, the problem is, the minute he tried to punch me, he couldn't maintain the relaxation at the elbow point. So, I know I'm talking about multiple things, because originally I was talking about plan B. Here I'm talking about kind of, sort of a, a plan B, but as soon as that punch comes in, we go back to plan A. Because you can't do... Most people can't do multiple things at the same time. At least not in that domain. Ah, yeah. uh, grab with that hand. Now, there is a variant on the same lock where you come that way. I'm not a huge fan of it, mainly because it's slightly more difficult to get it on. Get it on. Sorry, it's slightly more difficult to get it to work than, than, than the other one. But... The nice thing about it is this same side grab is probably slightly more common than a cross hand grab. So it makes sense to have in your martial awareness some ideas of what to do. Now, if somebody has grabbed you, there are a couple of possibilities. One is can you, uh, I'm not going to move, so don't actually do it, but can you kind of grab me, pull you towards me and bash me with your other, sorry, my bad, grab my arm, pull me towards you and bash me, right. So the, basically the idea is you take somebody off balance and you, you whack on one, so do that please. Right, now, here is the problem from a self-defence point of view. Every self-defence video that looks at this problem, yeah, do it on the other side. It's going to go, ha ha, I did some marvellous counter move, chop, chop, bang, whatever, <laughs> dancing, whatever. Um, the problem is, it won't work if I don't know it's coming. 
If I'm just standing here and I think we're in some kind of physical altercation, or maybe not even an altercation, maybe it's like, hey mate, can you tell me the time? And if you suddenly go and do that, it's like, well, yeah, I could very easily get whacked before I could react. If, however, that isn't imminent, or, or at least there is a there is a noticeable time delay between the two, then one of the things you can do is try for this, let's just pivot round, you can try for this kind of shape, so the shape is here, right, this hand is just controlling their fingers, here I'm going to push down. Now, generally speaking, it is better if you can get the other person's arm bent. That makes it much more fun. Um, but it, it will Your idea tend of fun. to work. Yeah, my idea of fun is... is yeah, okay. yeah, you have a point there, Sam. So, so, oh, okay. Well, didn't say that, sorry, same sorry, one, yeah. same one. So, I come here, I go down. If I can't do that, if I come here and go round to here, as if I was going to do that, but maybe I haven't got it. The first thing is, as long as I've started to move, he's now got to play chase, stay there for a minute, but he's got to play chase if he wants to punch me. So if you punch from there, it, it's it's doable, but it's 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 like you can't, you can't punch me now without moving your hands. That's one of the things at the end of your legs. <laughs> Feet, not hands. So... The grab comes in, I immediately come out here. If I can get that lock to work, great. Aren't I good to you? See, I've broken one wrist, now I'm breaking the other. Sorry. I'm just so kind. So I come to here. If I can't get that lock to work, and I, I'll know immediately, because I'll do that, just kind of make yourself strong. Yeah. So don't worry about the punch. Just there. If I can't do that, there's a load of other things I can do. Plan B again. I can come straight in there to the face. Sorry, let's just take you round a little. So from here, which doesn't work, I can come straight in there to the face. From here, that doesn't work, I can run away. From here, that doesn't work, I can switch from this lock to this kind of lock. Yeah, now, that was a... Uh, that was a bit of a sneaky thing that I did there. What I started doing was I started twisting his hand that way to get uh, his body to rotate away from me. Then I pushed in. In. So I'm just looking at this on the video, so it looks really nice from where I'm <laughs> Basically, uh, this lock, the first one, sorry, just cross on grab. This one is generally called Nikio, Nikaju, Z lock. Uh, Z lock, by the way, was the first wrist lock I was ever taught. I would have been less than 20, so we are oh, 40, long, nearly 50 years ago, I was taught that lock. That is scary. So, that's Nikio. This one, the one I was doing where, this is also Nikki O, Nikki Jew, Zedlock, whatever. This one is kind of a reverse Kota Geish. Normally, Kota Geish is done that way. So normally, Kota Geish comes off of maybe a grab, you do something, so you could, sorry, let's do it on the other side, then the TV, uh, the TV, the camera will pick it up. I've had a bad day today. I had to reboot my computer and I forgot the password and it took me about 45 minutes to get in through a back door and reset the thing and then Microsoft send you the text and a da 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 and I still hadn't finished it and then I remembered my original password. So, so, he's, so he's taking it out on me. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the grab. Bang. Here. That's a normal code of gauge. Now again, that's very much a jiu-jitsu code of gauge. A Tai Chi variant would be just to make sure. And um, by the way, sorry, I'm, when I say jiu-jitsu or Tai Chi, I don't mean that jiu-jitsu doesn't do exactly the same as the things that Tai Chi does. I'm, I'm, 
in Tai Chi you are admonished, you are told always, 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 everything comes through the center of the body. So you don't, you don't move the arms independently of the body moving. Everything should come up from the ground, through the feet, through the hips, through the core, into the arms. I have seen that in certain, certain styles of Jiu Jitsu, I've seen it in certain styles of Karate. But also, there are certain aspects of Jiu Jitsu and Karate where bop of some sort or another, without the core being engaged, is allowable. So I'm not having a dig at Jiu Jitsu. Uh, sorry, it was a yeah. grab. So here, bang, here, turning his palm away, putting, let's just come really close into camera, putting my fingers in the palm of his hand, my thumbs on the back, pushing his hand towards him and to the outside. That's a classic code of gauge. What I was doing before when, sorry, stop it. When I was coming here, I was just doing it inwards rather than outwards. Outwards, by the way, is really nice because you can almost always follow it up with an elbow. Uh, inwards, I don't know, you'd probably have to break their knee or something. Okay, so that's a bit of wrist locky stuff. Um, little exercise, interlock your fingers with mine. So, what we're going to do, sorry, can I beg a favour? Yeah, can the... I was going to take that off at the beginning. Thank you. That's okay. okay. He's got a very posh wedding ring. Uh, So, what we're going to do is a little exercise. Uh, relax your wrists. I'm going to just push them back. Now I'm going to relax my wrists, push them back. That's it. Relax yours. Back, mine, back. Bit more power. Bit more power. Bit more power. Bit more power. Right, just, it's just a simple partner exercise to get you used to that kind of uh, feeling. And also, um, an, a, a public shout out to a, a, an ex-instructor, well, friend, sometime instructor, seminar guru, a gentleman called Roger Sheldon. I was once at a seminar uh, wearing my karate geeks. Back in those days, I was a karate black belt. And it was all karate black belts. Pretty much all karate black belts. And Roger, senior grade, came into this club uh, who didn't, they didn't know him. And what he did was he said, right, what I want all you black belts to do, just do this with me, Sam, is just hold sure. hands. Right, so we're just holding hands. He said, I want you to hold hands and I just want you to talk to each other. Hi, Sam, how are you? Oh. And what was really interesting about it, and the reason he did it, is most of these karate black belts <clears throat> were doing it kind of like this because they weren't comfortable with a, a stranger holding hands, talking. Now, the, the club in question was run by a, 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 another old friend of mine, a gentleman called Steve Langbridge. And at the time, we are talking many, many years ago, uh, one of, I think, I can't remember how many kids Steve has got, but I think I was partnered up with his daughter, who was quite young and quite pretty, whereas most of the other people in the room were partnered up with ugly men. So if you're an ugly man, hi Sam, you're an Thanks ugly man, you. holding the hands with another ugly man, I do get that that's more difficult than if you happen to be holding hands. Now obviously there are any number of possibilities to do with gender and sexual preferences and I'm not going to get into that, that's just how it was back then 25 years ago. Um, so this exercise, you can do it this way or relax, you can do that. Do the same to me. That. That. Taking <laughs> off my feet. <laughs> that. That. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, I'm just checking I've got all the right number of fingers. <laughs> now, the purpose of these kind of exercises, the amount of bending of the wrist that we're doing <clears throat> is no more and maybe less than if you were doing the sort of classic four position wrist strengthening exercises. The thing that makes them interesting, if you're doing it with another person, is 
or let's put it the other way around. If you do it by yourself, you are in complete control of the force dynamics. I know exactly how much force I'm putting on there. When you're doing it with somebody else, let's go for this one, yeah, that one, go with this one, that one. Somebody else is putting that force into you. So you are learning, nobody's trying to hurt anybody, but you are learning how to deal with an incoming force that you are not in control of. Um, now, let's uh, grab both my wrists. The problem is, from a self-defense point of view, the attacks that you are likely to receive, if it ever happens for real, are almost certainly going to be different from yeah. everything you've ever practiced. And it doesn't matter if you've practiced one thing or 10,000 things, there will always be... The, uh, for instance, over in the corner here, This wasn't discussed. <laughs> oh, didn't I mention this? Sorry. This is a thing called a Kwandao. Kwandao, Kwandao. Now, it is highly unlikely that anybody is going to run down the street and whack you in the head with one of these. And if they did, you would certainly deserve to be surprised. <laughs> but the point is, it is highly unlikely... If you go to a jiu-jitsu class, or a karate class, or a self-defense class, or a tai chi class, or a knitting class, it is highly unlikely that you've ever defended yourself against a guandao. So, Sod's Law says, if you've defended yourself against this punch, and this punch, and this kick, and that kick, and what, the beggar will have a guandao. Yeah. yeah. So, Always, you know, it's corny, but it is always expect the unexpected. So, let's look at double hand grab. Now, the thing you have to be aware of is that, that there are some immediate possible attacks. There is that uh, pull me towards you, push me away from you, pull me to one side, pull me to the other side. So, those are the sort of force dynamics, and there's, there's other variants as well. Uh, attacks, you can probably knee me. You can headbutt me. Yep. Yeah? Uh, a headbutt in this situation is slightly unlikely just because Sam is so much taller than me. It, 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 it doesn't. He, you're just going to. get the force. You're not going to hit. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. You're not going to headbutt me in the face. Ideally, if you want to headbutt someone, you want to go bash. You want to get them. There, on the nose. Uh, disclaimer, I hate headbutts. Uh, I carry my brains in here. And I always worry if I headbutt somebody, bosh, my brains will pop out through my <laughs> eyes or something. <laughs> so, here's this grab. Now, we did this the last time we were together, a few months ago. One of the things we did was this coming up under and pulling through. It's nice because it's simple. It's nice because... Somebody grabbing you probably expects you to pull away. They might expect you to go in towards them. But coming here and going round, and this is, this, is, this is using the waist. So here, hold me as tight as you can. Right, now if he's holding me as tight as I can before my fingers fall off through lack of blood, <laughs> if I pull this way or push that way, if Sam is, like, doesn't want to move, yeah, he won't move. But this way... It's very difficult. Even if Sam knows it, so I want you to hold me like that, and you know what I'm going to do, and you're going to stop me. And if you can, great. I'm going to relax. I'm going to go. <laughs> it's very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible. Uh, you know, as a, again, as I say every time I teach, everything works, everything fails. You can haul off and hit somebody in the throat, as hard as you like, and they will just kind of look at you and go, my turn. And I have met people who, I'm not recommending it, <coughs> but I've met people whose training includes being hit full force in the throat. As I say, I seriously don't recommend that. Um, but I've met people who do that, and they're strong enough, they're trained enough to do that. So, 
everything fails, everything succeeds. So here's this grab. Other things we can do. We can come in to here and just cross the arms over. And that, by the way, that wasn't my int original intention. My original intention was to grab Sam's arm. But anyway, we can come in here and cross hands over. Now, hold me tight. It's difficult to stop that. Now, I, you know what I'm gonna do, mm -hmm. stop it. Okay. Difficult. I'm, I'm using strength, but it's not. You're using different I, muscles. So if you do it, to move your hand. Yeah, it, it's not easy to stop that, right? So here, now, what does this do? Two things. First thing, nothing. From a martial point of view, from a self-defense point of view, Doing that, nothing. Second thing, something. In here, your nasty mean attacker has a plan. I don't know what his plan is, but I can absolutely guarantee that for a split second when you do that, that plan is interrupted. From here, go into him. Now again, you know I'm gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Stop me. Really difficult. Yeah. Difficult for two reasons. One, mechanically. Here, as I come here, as I'm coming up, I'm going through the gap between their fingers and the thumb. Also, I'm going into him. <laughs> Treading on his foot again. The minute you go into somebody who is not expecting you to go into them, part of their brain goes, oh, it may actually go, oh dear. <laughs> it may actually go, oh. So the grab comes in, cross in. Now here, I have got the upper hand quite literally, my hands are higher than his. I have taken most of Sam's sight picture away. I think you can just about see me, right? But, I've literally got him on the back foot. I've literally put him at a disadvantage. Now, let's do that again. I go here, I go here, and then I stop. Do, release one of your hands and beat the shit out of me. Yeah, basically, we are not talking about that as being this, wow, what a great technique. If you do that, him and ten of his mates will go flying. It's not like that. It is just to interrupt... Uh, I think it's hypnotherapists talk about pattern interrupts. The idea that you take somebody... That if you can interrupt the way the brain is working, you can control the brain, kind of. I think that's... Um, I might be wrong. If you know, and if I do put this on YouTube, please comment. Uh, so, we cross the hands we come in. As we come in here, the low line is neglected. So I could come in here and go bosh. I could potentially come here and go kick. I could go kick, stamp, push. Maybe if I'm lucky, snappity snap snap of the uh, ankle. Snappity snap snap of the ankle, obviously assuming that the self-defense rules, laws, etc. Uh, allow it. In other words, if, uh, if I'm blind drunk and I've just come out of the pub and I go, Oh, you, mate, and I start and Sam tries to calm me down. It's an unusual way, but he might just calm me down like this. And then I do all this and I beat the what's it's out of him. I'm the aggressor. If Sam has come up to me on the street and said, give me your money or whatever, and then and I do that. Oh, that was interesting. There, came across, one hand came out and I came over with the other hand. Fine. Um, plan A became plan B. Don't care. Right, let's look at... Let's look at something else. Um, I'm trying to keep things relatively simple. 
And obviously, once somebody has laid a hand on you, just lay a hand on my. Once somebody has laid a hand on you, the nice thing about that is you've got this connection with them. So, you know, I think I said in previous video, I tend to just rest my hand here because it doesn't feel threatening, but it does let me do a number of things, some of which are really simple, by the way. Uh, from here, I can go here, I can then go there, I can then go there. <laughs> I can then go there, I can then come here, I can go there. I'm being mean and wicked, but what I'm doing <laughs> is being mean and wicked slowly. That's important. Yeah. So, here, I come, I rest my hand. I can say, look, mate, I don't want any trouble. And at the moment, I'm not being aggressive. If I thought Sam was going to be aggressive, that's when I can disrupt his balance, I can protect myself, and I can strike him all in one move. So, he puts his hand there, I go there, he goes I do, there. Now I move out the way as well, this hand comes up, this hand's going down, this hand's coming up. In Tai Chi, there is a posture called uh, Fair Lady Work Shuttles, and it looks like that, one hand raised, one hand down. So if you think about it as that, obviously I haven't come in there, but this has come down, this has gone up. This hand is doing two things. It's protecting my head, and it's also taking Sam off guard. Now, if this were for real, this is not, this is all an illusion. We're dreaming the whole thing. If this was for real... It feels very real. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, if this was for real, the grab and then the punch, that... As soon as I know I'm covered, this hand is going to keep traveling that way, but it's going to do it quickly. So just take this hand down from it. The idea is I would impact this area here. Bang. Maybe pop an eardrum. Uh, in Sam's case with his pierced ears, maybe impact that. I don't know if that hurts or not. Oh, oh yeah, that hurts. <laughs> oh, oh, right, you've got to see this. Um, I suppose I should, for the purposes of full disclosure, I should explain Sam is my son-in-law, right? So there's part of him that thinks, I'd like to beat the shit out of this old guy. <laughs> <laughs> and there's part of him that thinks, well, if I do beat the heck out of him, my wife's going to beat me up, my mother-in-law is going to cut my watsits off, and, and I'll come back and haunt him. But because Sam has got this, what, what's that called? A tunnel, a flesh tunnel. A, a flesh tunnel? A tunnel, yeah. A tunnel. That, that sounds disgusting, right? Yeah. Even for an old pervert like me. <laughs> the point is, just behind the ears here are pressure points. <laughs> Come back, Sam. You know you like it, really. I really hate it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we will play with these when, when I'm teaching people this weekend. It's, it's just not comfortable. But if you've got a flesh tunnel and you were doing that, oh. you would probably end up pushing that into that little nerve point as well. Um, never be afraid, never be, af you know, when you see the, the guy coming down the street, or the girl, or whoever, with, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be modern and gender unbiased, it's just difficult for old folk. If you've got like the chain that's like through the ring and into the lip and... Yeah. Now this is, this is wrong of me. I, I totally get this is wrong of me. But when I see people like that, I think of them as emergency chains. You know, oh, you probably don't know. Back in the day, I don't think they have them anymore. Train. Trains. Yeah. They used to have a train. In case of emergency, pull the chain. And if I see somebody with a chain, I think, in case of an emergency, <laughs> pull the chain. Yeah. You can, of course, if the, the nearest thing to that from a self-defense point of view, and this is probably, I can't think of any link to Tai Chi. The nearest thing is, if you come into somebody there and you get your thumb into their mouth in a fish hook, that's really nasty. <laughs> I once had it done to me with both hands, both, I wasn't expecting it, and this really elderly guy uh, who was, oh, scary dude, he managed to get both of those in there like bam, like that, and pulling my mouth apart. And I swear this is true, my spirit left my body. It went like six foot back. 
There was no thought at all in my mind of retaliating. There was no thought of like, I'm going to hit you. It was just like... It's a complete invasion. Yeah, I was gone. I was, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, any any advantage you can get. Um, Where were we? Grabby thing. Grabby thing, punchy thing. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Grab here. I've covered here. I can cover... This is, this is a very popular modern cover. It's not modern. It's been around for donkey's years. Back when I was a kid, it was called brushing your hair. Um, I used to have hair back in those days. So grab comes in here. That comes up here. If I do it this shape, this is out. So I can do it that way. I can do it that way. Same effect. Grab here. That stops that. Grab punch. That stops that. And that, if you, if you were to punch it, you're actually pushing my <laughs> arm into your head. Hit yourself, why don't you? That's it. Um, let us think. Let us move away from self-defence. Let us look at... Let us look at a couple of simple Tai Chi exercises. Ah... Uh, this is a nice exercise. Uh, it's, a, it's a combined exercise for strengthening the legs and for coordinating breathing and movement. In Tai Chi, ideally, and lots of other martial arts as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, everything you do should be coordinated. Uh, most martial arts, not all interestingly enough, but most martial arts, when they punch, on the punch, they breathe out either through the mouth or through the nose or through the ears. No. Uh, so if you punch, it's not... You don't punch out and breathe in as a general rule. So this exercise is based on this idea that you are breathing out as you expand and breathing in as you contract uh, and although we only have well most of us two arms and two legs uh, I call this exercise starfish so if we just you stand on an angle to me whatever it doesn't matter all we're going to do arms up you breathe in you come down you breathe out you go out you breathe in you come down you breathe out. You go out. Now, yeah, I've got a dodgy knee, so I'm only going to do a deep one of these once. If you want to, if you've got good knees, you breathe in, you come all the way down, you breathe out. And we've both luckily got trousers that have got enough give in them that there was no embarrassment. Breathe in. and so on and so forth. Starfish is a really good exercise, as I say, building leg strength. Uh, the one thing to bear in mind is when you are coming down, keep your knees in line with the feet. Don't let them collapse inwards. And if, you're, if you were unlucky enough to have knees that went outwards, don't let them do that. Keep the angle here so the knee, the knees stay more or less over the feet. Does that make sense? You don't want them. Um, let me see if I can do it here. I don't want it doing that. I want it doing that. Also with this exercise, in fact with all exercises, one of the things that I always say to students, don't do what you can't do. It is pointless. It's more than pointless. It's really, really stupid to injure yourself more in training than you're ever going to get injured outside of training. Um, I have a knee injury that was a training injury and that was a fluky thing. We were just doing, I'm going to do it in my good leg, we were just doing some simple kicking exercises at a taekwondo class and my knee went. And that's 6, 10, 6, 10, 12 years ago? And it still gives me trouble from time to time. Hopefully not any time soon. Um, so don't damage yourselves. Uh, right, let us look. Ah, yes, here's a good one. Take a, a fighting stance. Okay, I'm not going to move, so please don't hit me too hard. Hit me. 
I've said this before, I will undoubtedly say it many more times, being hit hurts. It's bad. We don't want it to happen. So, go back with that arm. Now, I'm going to come a bit closer. Oh, he can hit me even more. Go back with that arm. Okay. Bosh. And you go on. You know you want to hit me with the other one as well. Bosh. <laughs> so, first rule of self-defense. Don't be in range. However, if Sam is there and I am obviously here, come and hit me. He's going to step in and hit me. That's not rocket science. So one of the things to look at is, is it possible to be a little bit out of range whilst your potential attacker, we're not talking about once it kicks off, but is it possible to be a little bit out of range whilst your attacker thinks you are in range? And... The answer to that is a maybe. Uh, it will depend on whether the attacker's seen this video, it will or whether they've trained with me. I can't, can't guarantee. Some of my Tai Chi students, especially some of those in like their 70s and 80s, trust me, they're a bit on the vicious side. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go there. Um, so here, if I am talking to somebody, and I think there might be trouble. What I do not want to do is be standing here with my hands down by my side or standing here sort of slightly with my hands down by my side. I want my hands to be up in front of me. But if I was standing here and I brought my hands up to here, it is quite natural for Sam to think that I'm escalating the situation because now my hands are within his comfort zone. So what I need to be able to do is when I think, oh, this conversation, this interaction is getting out of hand, I need to step back a little and start talking with my hands. Now for me, to talk with my hands, pretty darn easy. Some people, it'll take you practice. But the point is, if I start, oh, really? Oh, I'm so sorry, mate. Look, blah, 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 blah. This, creates the illusion that I'm here, that I'm here. But if Sam decides to throw that first punch, he has got to step in to throw it. Ah, I couldn't resist, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's a Tai Chi move, by the way, um, called strum the loop. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, strum the loop really is like, you know, leg here so you can trip people or throw them. But it's, it's this kind of, squeezing motion. So here I am talking and if sat without moving your feet punch me. No, I mean go for where I am. Right? I really don't have to do much for that not to hit me. Whereas if he steps, I've got time. Uh, the technical term for it is the reactionary gap. In other words, the time it takes you to see and adjust to what the other person's doing. Uh, little exercise you can play. You stand within touching range. Now I'm gonna touch you, and what I want you to do, you can use either hand, I want you to stop me touching you. So you, yeah, exactly that, exactly that, exactly that. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you do it? Because <laughs> they're <laughs> quick. <laughs> now, I will be able to touch Sam 19 times out of 20, maybe 20 times out of 20, maybe 21 <laughs> times out of 20. <laughs> yeah. And he can do it to me. It's not me being quick. You do it to me. <laughs> yeah. The reason is we're too close. When somebody initiates an attack, unless you are very lucky and they kind of go, oh, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> And when women talk to me like that, I generally step back quite. Sorry, shouldn't say that. Non-PC. I'm. What can I say? I'm not PC. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even ALPC. ALBPC. ALBPC. A little bit PC. No. Okay. Sorry. Um. Oh God. <laughs> so if you are within touching range, 
generally speaking, the person initiating the touch does not give you any clues that the touch, the punch, or whatever is coming in. So, can you touch me in like super slow motion? No, I mean much slower than that. So, no, slower than that even, right? So my brain, my eyes see it. My brain goes, oh, he's going to do something. I better react. I will start reacting. Oh dear, he has touched me. The time differential between him moving and me seeing and reacting to it is always in his favour. You can imagine that it takes, just, just to give you an idea, it takes two tenths of a second for that to happen. For me to respond to that, it's like a tenth of a second to become aware of it, a tenth of a second to process that it's a threat and need to do something, and a tenth of a second for that hand to get up. So it's always, so when you touch there, it's taking me one third longer to do something about it. Hence, the reason for this. Because that little, now you step in and touch me, go back, step in and touch me, go back, step in and touch me, and you can use either arm, I'm not fussed. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same for you, so yeah. <laughs> John Travolto, we apologise. <laughs> right, so I'm going to step in. So I'm outside of range. I'm going to step in, and you're going to try and respond. <laughs> All this training, and I have another thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Sam took a step back. That's brilliant. That's good. Let's do it. Now, it's not impossible for me to get there before he blocks, but it is much more difficult. And I'm trying not to signal. I'm not going... <laughs> that might work with Sam, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Behind you! So, the point is, if you can keep a little bit of dif distance between you and somebody whom you feel uncomfortable with without overtly signalling that you feel uncomfortable, you can give yourself an advantage. If I was here and I felt uncomfortable and I step back and I start using talking hands and you realise what I'm up to, then you can probably do something to counter that. The simplest, if you use talking hands, the simplest would be grab the hand and move in. So actually use the hand against them. So you're talking and I do something to take this, so this becomes my first attack. Now, Tai Chi has a number of solutions to that issue. So if I'm here and I'm talking and you get, so grab the hand and move in and hit me, bosh. Right, so that's what Sam's gonna do. So I'm talking. Now, basically what I did there was I moved in, but what I'm trying to do is relax this arm and this arm. If you have your arms up, what I'm hoping for is that when I come in here, and grab Sam's arm, and it's quite noticeable. His shoulder is quite tense. His, his forearm is quite tense. When he grabs me, I'm hoping, I'm not gonna let it come into my face, but I'm hoping it's much more relaxed. It doesn't give him a lever to turn my body. So if you're talking, what I'm hoping to do is that. If you do the same to me, you get that. I'm not saying I don't turn at all, so obviously if his arms are long enough, just take your arm far enough over there, push it a bit further. There comes a point where however relaxed this arm is, it's not going to serve any yeah. purpose. But here, if I'm chatting and he pulls it across and I'm relaxed, oh, 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 I didn't mean to break his finger, honestly, but it was just there, Your Honour. Um, that's also about being relaxed. That's about not... Kind of, and this is self-defense, the most difficult thing. 
And actually, if you can get this right, the thing that will make most self-defense situations resolve themselves without conflict is when somebody is angry with you, not being angry back. Mm. That doesn't necessarily, there's a whole thing to do with language and use of language, and I used to lecture on that uh, appropriate language to use, and that's not about being very nice and mild and sweet. It's not about any nonsense like that. It's about building a bridge, it's about communicating with people. But if you are calm and confident, people will tend not to want to fight you. Mm -hmm. Remember what I said right at the beginning, everything works, everything fails. You can be calm and confident and the other guy can pull a knife out and chop your head off. He might have a Kwondo in his pocket. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't think they do pocket ver That'd be cool, wouldn't it? A pocket one. <laughs> it's like suddenly six foot long. I want one of those. Uh, I don't know if anybody here has seen any of the, I think it was Babylon 5, wasn't it, where they had the extendable uh, staff. So instead of, you know... You walk around the streets of London with one of these. Oh, don't hit Sam. You walk around the streets of London with one of these. Um, you're probably going to get nicked. Can you imagine, though, walking around the streets of London with something that was like that big in your pocket? You pull it out, you press a button, it's only blowing it out like that. I would be well happy with one of those. You must be able to buy those. Sorry? You must be able to buy those. The nearest thing you can get on Wish. Is it Wish? The oh Chinese... Yeah. Uh, thing. You can get, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like a magical effect, I think. It's a spring-loaded steel thing. It. But they, they don't have any uh, structural integrity. But it, it, it does apparently go from like little, little up to big, big. Which I guess, I guess where it would be good, it's not a weapon. That you can't, I mean, if you hit somebody with it, it's probably just going to bust apart. But where it might be really cool is you come out of the pub or the club or whatever and somebody else comes out and they're a bit drunk and it's this is where you've got to be lucky. It's got to be night time and it's got to be fairly dark. And then you go chunk and they go, whoa, because it would look... Keep your distance. <laughs> it would look... Uh, yeah, no, I'm trying to think. No, pretty much all the weapons that I have in here... Um, oh, are things that are artistic weapons. So, for instance, this looks like a sword, oh. but it's a collapsible training Tai Chi sword. Uh, it locks into place more or less, uh, but it's, you know, yeah. It's not cool in your sound. It's not, it's not something that I would recommend for use outside the dog and duck, because if I hit Sam with this really hard, it might cut him, but it's more likely just to break That's and cool. then... Yeah. yeah, it's 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 not a weapon, it is a practice item. Um, uh, do not carry weapons, carrying weapons is bad, carrying weapons will get you in trouble with the police. Carrying weapons will actually make you more likely to get into trouble because a, you will feel like, oh, I'm confident I have a weapon, uh, I'm the man. Um, and it just, yeah, it just increases your risk factors enormously. And yes, uh, sad to say, if you went back nearly, for, yeah, nearly about 50 years, yeah, I do know what I'm talking about in that particular respect. No more to be said. Let's see. Um, so we've done a bit to do with distancing. Let us do a little bit of Tai Chi push hands. So put one foot back. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Touch your wrist. Sorry, my bad. Not Touch this. your wrist to my wrist. Now, relax. I'm going to push towards you. As I push towards you, just allow your hip to turn that way so my push goes past. Then push towards me. I'm going to, I'm going to push towards you. Allow that hip to go back. That's it. Now push straight towards my centre. So if I don't, so you push straight towards there. Mm -hmm. So you will push me back if I don't redirect your push. Oh, I see. This is classical one arm Tai Chi push hands. 
porridge stirring. It's stirring the porridge. I've heard it called. Um, good little leg exercise. Ideally, you should be as relaxed as possible. Am I doing the right thing there? You're doing the, the right thing. There's just too much strength in your arm. Okay. So when you receive the push, that wants to be more relaxed. So there, you have to turn the hip right. back that way. Like that. That's it. See, if I come straight into your center, that's where you, in Tai Chi terms, you lead him into emptiness. Yeah? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got anything or something or what it led it down to or if any of it's of any use because this has basically been uh, me trying to come up with a few ideas, some of which I may teach at this two times one and a half hour uh, sessions that I'm teaching at the weekend. I mentioned before about having a plan A that becomes a plan B. From a teaching perspective, plan A almost always becomes plan B, C, D and E because you never know what group you've got. Uh, you might be expecting six foot six giants and you get kids. You might be expecting kids and you get six foot six giants. Some of the techniques you teach across the board are the same. Others are different. Anyway, thank you very much. My thanks to Sam and cheery bye.